Welcome to a presentation from the Nevada Department of Education's Nevada Digital Learning Collaborative. My name is Claire Cummings and I'm a digital engineer with the DLC and I'm excited you are here for today's presentation. This is the first in a new series called Elementary Canvas Classroom Tours, and so I'm excited to show you inside my specialist classroom today. Uh, this will be the first in a series where we will take a peek inside real uh, virtual classrooms on Canvas to see the content and the navigation and how we are making it work for students at the elementary level. Again, my name is Claire Cummings and I am an elementary coding specialist at Dickens Elementary in Clark County School District. I have been a third, fourth, and fifth grade teacher and also spent a year as an instructional coach at the school as well. Today's agenda is pretty simple. I'm just going to take you on a tour of my specials classroom at the elementary level and look at some of the content but also the navigation. We're finding that uh, for Canvas, sometimes elementary teachers are kind of having to uh, hack the system, uh, if you will, to get the navigation where our younger students can uh, get to where they need to go in, in an efficient way. So uh, everything you see today I stole from Facebook and other wonderful teachers who have shared their ideas, and so it's just a culmination of all of that research. Uh, and uh, over the next few videos, I will show you different classrooms from kindergarten, first, second grade, uh, how teachers are making it work at the primary level and finding a, a good amount of success in having the students navigate and do content within Canvas. So this is my Canvas dashboard and yours, if you are a general education teacher, you have a similar amount of course cards on your dashboard, but you will have your different subject areas, reading, writing, math, science, those sorts of things. But in specials, we have all of the same kind of course card because we have classes, uh, course cards for every single class in the school. But you'll see that I have narrowed it down to just six course cards and that's because I did a, a a feature called cross-listing and if you are a specialist teacher at the elementary level and have not cross-listed your classes I highly recommend it uh, because you have the same content for each grade level and so it doesn't make sense to kind of duplicate your work on 40 different co course cards to each classroom when you can put it all in one grade level course so all the students are still enrolled in there we just moved them from their section all into the same uh, course card and so it has been very helpful Helpful to not have to update 40 course cards and just six of them. So that is called cross-listing. And if you search through the Canvas help website, there are some instructional videos on how to do that. So we'll take a look inside uh, one of these courses and they all have this, the exact same navigation, just the content uh, for the lesson does change but the uh, basic layout is, is the same. So I did get on the Bitmoji train like many teachers and decided to make myself a little virtual classroom. And I do think it helps students because when they're clicking around to their different courses, when they see that Bitmoji classroom, they know, oh, I'm in Miss Cummings class, just like they would if they were walking around the school. So I do think it's helpful for navigation uh, so they know where they're at. And then for the homepage, I decided to keep it really simple. I have kindergarten through fifth grade, so I knew that whatever navigation I chose, it had to be something that all of those grade levels could do. Uh, and especially on that first day, I thought, okay, they have to get to me somehow without me telling them how to get to me. So I decided to put a click here button so they knew that's what they would click to come find me um, and made the today's lesson uh, button bigger. So these are all buttons uh, with links that take them to the different sites. And so we can uh, take a look at some of them here. Uh, we'll go into today's lesson in a few minutes, uh, but I'll start with the contact page here. So in this page, just a little bit about me, my email address, and my office hour times. But then I did include a button to the Google Meet. So even though it is a nicknamed Google Meet, uh, this link goes right to that nickname Google Meet. So uh, it, if you click it, it will generate the Meet uh, and, and then they just hit join and they come right in. But I did also include an image of the join code just in case they got lost in Google Meet and this screen popped up, they knew that they could type in that code to get to me as well. 
I found that screenshots are really helpful in Canvas. Uh, if you're trying to navigate people to a specific spot, doing screenshots um, is kind of the way to do it because especially for those students who didn't come to the live class, having the screenshots allows them to still fulfill the activity or whatever they need to do on a certain site and not have to come ask how to get there. And then down here, I just we are on a six-day rotation at our school, and so I included the calendar for the month of the different days uh, because sometimes it gets confusing with holidays of which day we are on, so I have that listed as well there. So if we go back to the home page, uh, I have a link to code.org, which is the main uh, independent practice site that we use. So that takes students right to their sign-in screen. Uh, we haven't gotten to Scratch yet, uh, but I do have it there for later. And then I have a previous lesson button as well. And I will show you in a moment kind of the back end of how that's working with the modules. Um, but that uh, that is something that I know is important, again, for students who maybe miss class. I uh, really like that it's I can store the lessons there for them. So now we'll take a look inside today's lesson. And so I, again, thought it has to be very simple. I didn't want students to have a million pages to click through or a lot of text to read. I, um, so I did keep uh, this template the same for every grade level and it's the same every week so that it's not changing on them and they know exactly where everything is. So there's just this one section and two. There's the live with Ms. Cummings and then the activity. Uh, we teach for 20 minutes uh, live and then we send them off to do the independent activity. And so uh, it, I thought this is that's exactly how I should organize the page. And I do like that this is a page rather than an assignment because of the immersive reader function. The immersive reader only works on pages and not on assignments or uh, quizzes or other features in Canvas. And so by having that here, a student who's in kindergarten can click that and it can read the text to them so that if I did have some sort of explanation here of the activity, it could be read to them and they could do it independently. So here is the Live with Miss Cummings. It has the time and then another click here button uh, for the Google Meet takes them directly to their grade level nicknamed Google Meet. I also have a spot here to uh, put a link to the video, the recording of the video that I do uh, or of the lesson. And so um, I just link that out to my Google Drive video uh, so they could see what they missed. And so that is not linked right now because that is the current one I'm doing. So I have to upload those this week. And uh, then the activity is down here. So after the live class, uh, follow the directions below to sign in. So I could have just put the button here, but again, sometimes students forget how to sign in. So I have the screenshots. So it says follow these steps and I put some arrows. I made these in Canva, uh, which not to be confused with Canvas. Canva is a graphic design website that you can get a free educator uh, account for. And so I just imported the screenshot of the screen from code.org and then I was able to add an arrow and download it and upload it into Canvas. So I found Canva is pretty quick and handy to do these screenshots and add things to it like arrows that I wanted to. Uh, so these are three separate images that I uploaded into Canvas and that way they can get in independently if they are not with me. So that's an example of the uh, today's lesson page. And again, that will be the same. Um, oh, I forgot there's one more page here. If I click next, so if they happen to click next, it will tell them that they are all done for the day. And uh, I did also put a little link and screenshot to the dashboard button. And if they click this, it takes them to their uh, main Canvas site, which is their dashboard. And so uh, that was a way to get them back to their classroom uh, from where they came from. So that is the today's lesson. And we'll go back to the home screen. So the last thing I'll show you is the previous lessons button. And in the previous lessons, when we click it, uh, this 
we'll go ahead, start at the very beginning of the lessons that we did and then there's a next button and it'll take you to the next lesson so it goes in order class one class number two and this is when they signed up for code.org so it has the join code and everything um, that we did for that day so that is uh, kind of in a module so I'm going to show you the back end of the modules the way it's set up students are never really clicking this module button over on the side they're going in and clicking buttons and they're in a module and they don't even know it so all the past lessons go here and I just drag them down as they're done and put them down here in order and then the today's lesson is right here so the today's lesson button on the front page is linked to this page right here this class number four page and then the previous lessons button is linked to this page and so by linking it to those pages uh, then there's it creates a next button for them to go in order for the module next 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 and then this one is next and it stops because there's no more uh, to go to so um, that is uh, a way to kind of organize your uh, content a little bit um, in a way that is simple so and then I again I don't tell students to go into the modules and try to navigate all this they could if they wanted to but I really am just kind of directing them by hit hitting these buttons so they're never really seeing all of that which really makes the navigation a lot easier for them so that is a little bit about how I set up canvas um, and again I think for it's just easier to make it simple and kind of repeat the same templates or structures so that students know that it's predictable just like we would do in a physical classroom you know having them know where the paper is all the time or where the pencils are all the time I think it's important uh, in canvas to make it predictable uh, and have things in the same spot so they know uh, how to access things So that was a tour of an elementary specialist classroom. Uh, what you saw today is just one example. It is not uh, what you have to do or uh, the be all end all. I'm changing things each week and saying, oh, this isn't working or I need to add this. So uh, just some ideas that might help spark some for you. And uh, next week uh, in the next series, I will uh, show you a tour of a kindergarten classroom and so if you are a general ed teacher uh, look out for that video it will be the elementary canvas classroom tour series number two and that will uh, go through kinder which uh, has some wonderful features that makes it very clear for both parents and students how to get into different parts of their day so i'm excited for that if you have any questions my email is on the screen there i'd be happy to chat more about uh, canvas for elementary and i am really appreciative that you are joining us today thank you so much and have a wonderful day